Women's Basketball Weekly. I'm Parker Kelly with the Cougar Sports Network, and I'm sitting here with head women's basketball coach, Coach Lauren Martin. Coach, it's been a while, but I'm excited to talk to you today. I'm excited to be here. Well, let's go ahead and rewind to pre-Thanksgiving break. The Cougars traveled out to California for a doubleheader with Pomona Pitzer and the University of the Redlands. It wasn't the result that you were necessarily hoping for dropping both of those games, but what was that overall experience like getting to bond with your team out on the West Coast? Um, I mean, it was a great time. And anytime that you can have experiences off the court and on the court together like that, um, it helps you just build those bonds and strengthen your ties moving forward. And since coming back from California, the Cougars have dropped their last two games, Principia College a couple uh, week, or a couple days ago, and then last week against Manchester College. That was before Thanksgiving. Uh, the Cougars were held to under 60 points scoring in both of those contests. What would you attribute those struggles to? Um, I think that we're just really looking to find like our flow. And once the flow hits, um, I'm not worried about how we will proceed moving forward. So we've talked about those things, of course, and had, a, had some good meetings and some really great practices. The way we've been bouncing back is, is so promising. And this group, this group is um, ready, and um, I know they can't wait to get on the floor and play again tomorrow. And one player that's really picked up the slack is Alexis Desjardins. She's had double digits uh, scoring in two of the last three. How impressive has her performance on the court been since coming back from injury? Yeah, I mean, you know, she got injured almost a year ago, and in each week we're talking, hey, you're getting quicker, you're, you're, you're pushing through some things that maybe a few weeks ago you couldn't see yourself doing. And so um, she, she's continuing to try to push past some thresholds that she's had, and then because of that it's translating to games. So um, I think that that confidence in her is coming back, and she's just such a competitor. She wants to do anything that she can do. Uh, to get us a W. Absolutely, and the Cougars have a chance to snap this losing skid tomorrow as you travel right down the road for the Division Street rivalry against Dominican University. What do you want to see from your team tomorrow? Oh, all together now, right? Like, we're all we're going into this game as one complete group, and just I want energy, I want um, pride, I want to represent what we are and who we are in our program and our culture uh, the way that, that we need to, the way that we should, and the way that, that we know will help us go into any game. And with that, you win. Absolutely. Well, Coach, best of luck tomorrow, and thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Make sure to check out the Cougars as they travel to Dominican University for a matchup tomorrow with the Stars. Tip-off is set for 1 p.m. Central Time, and coverage can be found on our athletics website at cucougars.com. I'm Parker Kelly signing off, and we'll see you next week on CUC Women's Basketball Weekly. Go Cougars. What's going on, Cougar fans? Peter Borkowski here on the Cougar Sports Network, joined as always by Parker Kelly, and we're getting ready for some Monday night hoops between your Concordia University Chicago Cougars and the Crusaders of the Great Lakes Christian College. And Parker Cougars, they're coming off a big win this past Saturday. They traveled down Division Street and took down Dominican University in their 
conference season opener, 81-52. to And Parker, it was just a good game from the Cougars all around. But leading the charge in that game was the standout freshman for the Cougars, Kalia Reed. Kalia Reed has had some big moments this season, scoring yet another 20-point game. Mm -hmm. She was phenomenal. And really, the fact that she's doing this as a freshman is going to be really important for this team, not just for this season, but mm -hmm. building towards the future because she's a freshman and she's already leading the charge. So right. great performance by her to get her team a big win over the Stars. Right, and also having a good game in that Dominican contest was, of course, Michaela Ellis. It was her first start since the season opener, dealt with some injuries, and she showed no rust in that game, scored 15 points. And, Parker, I know she's someone you really want to highlight tonight who's going to be important to the Cougars' success. Michaela Ellis, she's been around this program for her fourth year now. She's been big in, in the moments that she's been able to play this season. I know she missed a couple games due to injury, but she's one player that's really going to have to step up tonight and really lead the charge because mm -hmm. she's been here for four years. She, she knows how the system works. She knows how Coach Martin coaches. She knows all the intricacies of this program. So she's really going to have to step up and lead tonight. Right. Now let's talk about the team on the other side of the court from the Cougars. That is the Crusaders of Great Lakes Christian College. And, Parker, it's been a bit of rough sailing for the Crusaders this year. Two of eight on the year. They've lost five straight games dating back to their last game, which was a 98-46 to a loss to St. Francis of Indiana. And, Parker, one of the main things to know about this team is they're just a very small team. They have eight players rostered. Only seven of them are addressed here tonight. But still, in that St. Francis loss, they did get a good performance out of Leo Yanko. Absolutely. She, she led the charge with 23 points. And going back to what you said, only seven players warming up tonight. I've been there before where you just don't have a lot of depth on the bench, so that uh -huh. forces you to play a lot of minutes. Those players are going to get worn out typically uh, more easily. But this is just a tough team because they have, you know, girls playing a lot of minutes. So right. very tough team. Right. And one of the reasons that they are maybe a little troublesome is their leading scorer. That is Sakura Nakano. She leads the team in scoring, as I previously mentioned. And Parker, despite, like you said, despite the small size of this team, she's going to be someone to really look out for tonight. Averaging 18 points on the season. She can shoot it from three. She can shoot it from mid-range as well. She can really do it all. She, she Like I said, 18 points scoring. They have five players averaging double digits so this is a team that can definitely score the basketball so the Cougars are going to have to be extra sharp on the defensive end all right all right well these two squads have never met being non-conference opponents but Parker Cougars looking to build off of their win on Saturday that snapped a little bit of a losing streak for them what do they need to do to get that momentum back win their second straight game well I mean it's it's important that you bring up the Stars victory they, they were on a three-game losing streak got a little bit of momentum in last uh, Saturday's win versus Dominican. Keep that thing going. Build on the things that you did well. A reason the Cougars were able to get a win over the Stars, they made their shots, something that they've struggled with. They were held to 60 right. points in, in two of their last three games before Dominican. Right. They're going to have to continue to do that, make shots, be sharp on the defensive end. Right, yeah. The last game the Cougars played here was that Principia game, and the Cougars' Achilles ankle, that Achilles heel, excuse me, that game, was really the lack of shot making. As for my Achilles game, it's going to be run the court a lot. Like we said, this is a very shorthanded GLCC team. So if the Cougars, if they can keep up that pace of play, go up and down the court at a really nice speed, they're going to drain this team out quickly. The Cougars, as we've seen this year, Coach Lauren Martin has really highlighted it. They have the depth this year that they they can go up down the court, get players off the bench to replenish those legs. They can do that tonight. They can wear down these seven players. GLLC, GLCC is trotting out tonight. It should be a good night for the Cougars. But we're going to see what happens here when we see the Cougars and the Crusaders take each other on. Tip-off is set in just under five minutes. But before then, we're going to send it down to courtside for the National Anthem and the starting lineup. Then Parker and I will be on the Cougar Sports Network for you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a minute. Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Dawn, president of Concordia University Chicago. Thank you for tuning in to today's Cougar Athletics broadcast. We take great pride in the strength of both our athletic and academic programs, which are rooted in our steadfast commitment to Jesus Christ. Dedicated to the liberal arts as a foundation of a high quality college degree, 
we believe education should form individuals for service to their neighbors. This makes Concordia Chicago an exciting and fulfilling place to study, work, learn, and grow. Learn more today by visiting cuchicago.edu. Thank you, and go Cougars!
and the Cougars of Concordia University in Chicago. Let's meet the starting lineup. First, for our visitors from Lansing, Michigan, the Crusaders. At guard, a 5 4 sophomore from Kentwood, Michigan, number one, Mackenzie Monty. At guard, a 5 4 senior from Detroit, Michigan, number three, Randy Fitzgerald. At guard, a 5 6 junior from Peoria, number 13, Leah Yanko. At guard, a 5 2 senior from Kumamoto, Japan, number 24, Sakura Nakano. And at forward, a 5 11 sophomore from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, number 32, Mackenzie Kent. Assistant coaches are Katie Shannon and Mackenzie Skentel, and the head coach of the Crusaders is Ray Kimball. We're just seconds away from tip-off here in Geisman Gymnasium as your Concordia University Chicago Cougars get set to take on the Crusaders of Great Lakes Christian College. Peter Borkowski here joined by Parker Kelly, Michaela Ellis, and Mackenzie Kent on the tip, and GLCC comes away with it. They will be on the offensive first, wearing their black uniforms with a blue lettering, white trim. They'll go left to right. Cougars and their gold at unis, white lettering. They're moving right to left on your screen as Alexis Desjardins got a hand in there. Ball gathered back by the Crusaders. They remain on the offensive less than seven seconds ago on the shot clock now. As dribbling now with the Isner Kano. She takes a three. She'll air ball that one. And a successful first defensive possession for CUC gets us started here in Geisman. And you can't really ask for a better start than that. Getting a forcing a shot clock violation on GLCC to start out. Very good defensive drive. Now the standout freshman, Khalil Reed. She goes to work offensively, puts the moves, goes right to the rim, cannot get a lucky bounce. Rebound collected by the Crusaders. They're moving the other way. Nice move by Khalil Reed to get inside. Just have to be able to finish. Nakana goes up for the shot. She gets hit on the way by Leela Scott, another freshman starting here for CUC. And, in fact, the foul will go on... Number three, Khalil Reed must have tagged Sakura Nakano on her way up. Nakano hits our first point of the night with a free throw. She's leading this GLCC team in points, 18 and a half per game. As her next shot is up and good, so the Crusaders, they jump out to an early 2-0 lead. A little over nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Nakano, such a good player for this team. The Cougars are going to have to be extra sharp defensively, as I talked about in the pregame, be able to slow her down a little bit. 
Missouri wing arm now kicks it. Layla Scott, a three ball. It's good. Layla Scott shows the range, and the Cougars are in front now, three to two. Yeah, Scott is a player that has gotten a couple starts recently, really stepping up big time as a freshman. Really nice three to get her team going on offense. A three from the Crusaders is no good. Rebound collected and then missed by Mackenzie Kent. Ball going out, last touch CC. But to Parker's point, Leela Scott, seven games played coming in tonight, four of which she has started in as... She's been getting more and more playing time as the season's going on, really carving out herself a role on this squad. Now it's Leia Yanko, the leading scorer for the Crusaders in their last game, a massacre at the hands of St. Francis, Indiana. Lost that game at 98 to 46. As they're looking to get back in the win column after five straight losses coming into tonight. Now Khalil Reed, she pulls up for the mid-range. She drains it, Khalil Reed. It's a good swirl around the buck basket, and now it's 5-2 to two in favor of the Cougars. Kalia Reed, she's just been phenomenal as a freshman, doing a lot of scoring for this team, and she definitely has a bright future ahead of her. Uh, here's a mid-range shot from Nakano. It's no good. Michaela Atlas bringing the ball up the other way. She had 15 points, and the Cougars win on Saturday against Dominican. She swings it to the corner. Layla Scott up top to Nazari. Wing up for a three. It's good. She gets a lucky swirl as well. And the Cougars up 8-2 to two now. Really good ball, mo ball movement by the Cougars, getting it swung around and finding Missouri Wiggum on the wing, and Wiggum able to drain the three. She's a player that's really stepped up for this team in her senior campaign. And that's a good sign of progression, Parker, from the Cougars. We see some of the earlier games that were here in Geisman. The offense looked a little stagnant at point. The Brock wasn't really flying around, especially when you're looking for that perimeter game. That ball's got to be moving at a whim's notice, and they seem to be finding that recipe here tonight. Nice hands there by Kalia Reed. She can't collect it before it goes out of bounds, however. So GLCC will inbound it. 19 seconds to go on the shot clock. Here is Mackenzie Mondi. She works her way inside, cannot hit the shot under the basket. Alexis Desjardins with the rebound. Desjardins moving up the court. Now she's just going to pull from three. Desjardins no good off the front of the iron. Ball knocked out. Last touch by GLCC. It was Yanko and Scott battling for it. Yanko, last person to touch it. Because of that, Cougars will inbound at 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Despite missing that shot, you got to love that about Desjardins. She's not afraid to pull it up from deep, and she's proven to be a very good outside shooter, and you've got to respect the confidence. 44% from three, that leads the team. Speaking of Layla Scott, she'll going to take a run for that crown the way she's shooting three balls tonight, and because of it, GLCC is going to have to call a timeout. And we're going to take a break here as well on the Cougar Sports Network. CUC, they jump out to an early 11-2 lead. 7.05 left to go here in the first quarter. We'll be back in just a second. Back here in Geisman Gymnasium, and everything's turning up Cougars. Since they went down 2-0, they've scored 11 straight. Hold on to that 11-2 lead, 7.05 left to go here in the first quarter. And like I said, Parker, I mean, it took them, you know, a second to get going, but about after the first minute, CUC, they've been hitting shots. They've been playing excellent defense. This is what you wanted to see when you're playing against a shorthanded team like the Crusaders. And how about Leela Scott? Two threes already, and it, granted, she's only been on campus for uh, one semester, but 
just watching her play, she's all business, and she's surely been that tonight, and she's been huge. Leading the team in scoring, I know it's early with six points, but she's been great. Yeah, and Scott came into tonight, three made three-pointers on the season. She's almost matched that alone here with two so far. As now she's going to chance for a third three. No good. Leela Scott, a little bit of a heat check there. As the Crusaders looking to get their first point since the early goings, and they do, courtesy of Randy Fitzgerald, the senior guard out of Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan excuse me. Stays in state to go to Christian College. Great Lakes Christian College as Kalia Reed, her nice move is denied by the rim. Chris Great Lakes Christian College located in Lansing as there's a floater and a charge. Mackenzie Mondi didn't get the shot to fall anyways and then on top of that insult to injury knocks over a Cougar. That was a good defensive play by Missouri Wiggum. Not only has she stepped up offensively, but a little bit defensively as well. And a really nice play to get her team the ball back on the offensive end. All right, despite it being her senior season, Missouri Wiggum got her first career double-double earlier in the year during the team's California trip. As now the Cougars work it to Wingum, try to get a lob pass into Ellis. Just goes over everybody's head and out. As inbound pass to Nakano. She gets the ball back. Team's leading score, just under 19 points a game. 19 and a half to be exact. She hands the ball off to Mondi. The sophomore guard goes to work on Layla Scott. She's been the main offensive catalyst for the Cougars. And now a pass out to Nakano. She'll take a three and air balls that one as well. Not a pretty shot at all. And now a football pass way ahead of everybody. A little bit of a careless turnover there by the Cougars. Not exactly the sequence of events you want to see from either side. It started with the Nakano air ball and then just a, a sloppy turnover by the Cougars. And, and they, they already have a big lead, but that doesn't mean you start playing sloppy. You still have to play polished because you want to improve on the things that you did well and on Saturday's win versus Dominican. Kalia Reed commits her second foul. And because of it, she's going to get subbed out for Princess Gates. So Khalil Reed will sit down, already getting into some foul concerns. Still over five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Crusaders pass inside. That shot, I think Michaela Ellis got a piece of it, but McKenzie can't proves too tall, gets her own rebound and puts it back. 5'11", by far the tallest player on this Crusaders squad. She's just in the right position at the right time, able to get her own miss, get the offensive rebound, and put it back for two. And now going up and getting denied by the backboard was Randy Fitzgerald. Now Cougars, they have the advantage. Five on four. Layla Scott, pump fake. She goes inside, a little bit of a Euro step. She's winning a foul. She's not going to get one. Now a bad pass there from Nakano. It was a really nice move by Scott, oh, sidestepping the defender. Trying to get to the basket, just looked a little out of control on her way up. But nonetheless, a great move by Scott, playing well early. Nice pump fake from three-point land, and then a nice pump fake on the pass as well. Just cannot finish it. Now here's Desjardins from the top of the key, off the front of the rim, and Allison McGregor, she goes up for the rebound. She draws the foul on the floor. but go against Mackenzie Kent. And now we see Allison McGregor enter the game as historically been a starter through her first two plus seasons as a Cougar and Coach Martin bringing her off the bench a little more this year. And that just goes to the, the depth that we were talking about in the pregame where you have Allie McGregor coming off the bench and what a great rebounder she's been in her season so far and really throughout her career. It provides a little depth coming off the bench. Nice move there by Alexis Desjardins. It's a nice kiss off the backboard, and she jumps this lead back up to seven, 13 to six. A bad pass there right into the hands of McGregor. And now a whistle blows. Foul on Crusaders. Excuse me, jump ball. Possession favoring CUC. And that's something that Coach Martin has, has wanted to see a little bit more out of McGregor. It wants her to be a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end, and we see fighting for that rebound on the floor, forcing the jump ball, and now getting 
her team back on offense. Floater by Desjardins off the back of the iron. She gets the rebound, tries to put it up again. She can't. Now there's Princess Gates. She grabs that missed shot. Missouri Wingham trying to figure out the offense. In down pass to McGregor and one. Allison McGregor receiving the lob pass from the Missouri Wingham goes up, makes the basket, and draws a foul on top of it. And now she'll have a chance to complete the three-point play and make it a 10-point game. Another great example of toughness by Allie McGregor. Got, a, got shoved in the back on her way up, still able to finish, and now an opportunity for a three-point play for the junior. Her first free throw of the game is up and good. Three-point play by McGregor makes it 16-6. to Crusaders looking for some success offensively. It's been hard to come by. 2 for 11 from the field, 0 for 4 from three-point land. Now here's going to be another three-pointer. That's another air ball. Crusaders having a hard time even finding the rim. As now Malia Perry, she checks in for the team. Her first shot off the front of the iron, and the Crusaders the other way. Mondi, she's going to try to take it all the way to the rim, steps through all the defenders, no good. Rebound collected by Fitzgerald. She puts it through the hoop, makes it 16 to 8. Cougars have been a, lax a little lackadaisical sometimes on the defensive end. They've given up a couple of offensive boards to Great Lakes Christian, something they're going to have to clean up. Block called on Nakano as the standout player for the Crusaders so far this year, really having a tough start to this game. Scored two points, both of which were on free throws as she heads to the bench now. Replaced by number 12, Allie Farrell, freshman guard out of Penfield, Michigan. Penfield, Mississippi, excuse me. As here comes Michaela Ellis, turnaround jumper, and I don't think I have to say what happens after that. As soon as Ellis gets to that spot, you see her start to turn. You might as well just give up playing defense because those are always going to find the basket. Sometimes it doesn't matter how good a defense you play. That's been her iconic shot throughout her career in River Forest. When she gets that jumper, it's going to be good almost every time. To the rim was Mackenzie Mondi. Rejected by the rim was Mackenzie Mondi. Now a long ahead pass by Ellis to Perry, and Perry's going to take a travel. So turnover... On CUC, 18-8, they are on top of the Crusaders who inbound the ball to Mondi. Mondi 0 for 3 so far today, looking for her first points. As she really slows this offense down. Point of attack defender for CUC is Michaela Ellis. Ball over to Yanko. She draws it out, a long three, no good. As that ball poked out of bounds by Wingham. Great Lake, they're still trying to find their first three ball of the night. They are 0 for 6 so far from beyond the arc, and now Farrell, the inbounder. Yeah, they've had their, their struggles from shooting outside of the arc, for sure. Nice hook shot there from Atlea Yanko. Does it get much prettier than that? She brings her team within eight. Now three ball from Alea Perry, no good. Off the rim and off the backboard. Crusaders moving the other way. Sydney Mitchell guarding Mondi. Still looking for her first points of the night. Now she takes it to the rim. That's no good. Mondi having a really tough night from the field. She'll go 0 for 4. Sydney Mitchell for the layup and good. Sydney Mitchell, despite being one of the smaller players on this roster, makes up for that in speed. And we see getting the... The quick transition bucket really utilizing her speed to get to the basket and get the layup. Good hand there by Perry, knocks it out of bounds. That'll give her defense a chance to reset as the Crusaders thinking about a sub. Now they bring in number 31, Shadia Greer. We see these GLCC players starting to get a little winded, and that's something we talked about in the pregame. They just don't have a lot of depth, so these players are being forced to play a lot of minutes. Block there by Michaela Ellis, and it knocks Monty to the ground. But as Parker mentioned, GLCC, they're working with two subs on the bench. Usually they're working with three, but they have a player out tonight with an injury, which means that they are down to just two players off the bench. 
Now foul called on Sidney Mitchell before the ball is even inbounded. Cougars have done a really nice job on their three-point defense. Currently rank fourth in the NAC in terms of that category, allowing opponents to shoot about less than 24%. So this has been a good three-point defense all year, and they need to continue to do that tonight. At one point last year, CUC was towards the top ten at nationally in three-point defense. They seem to be carrying that over this year. This is a team who prides themselves on not giving up three-pointers as – Princess Gates can't get that three-pointer to fall. CUC still on top, 20 to 10. They are in the bonus now after that last foul on Farrell. Cindy Mitchell she finds Malia Perry. She steps beyond the arc, takes a three, makes a three. I think they're going to call that a two. Call that a two her however, her foot was just on the line. She tried to back up and blocked there by Michaela Ellis. Getting knocked down was Mondi. That is the second straight shot from Mondi that has been emphatically denied by Michaela Ellis. The first one was clean. This one, however, will send Mondi to the line and also put Great Lake Christian College in the bonus. That was a vicious attempt at a block from Mikhail Ellis, and I hate to be Mondi on that play. She got, she basically fell to the ground really hard. But man, what a what a vicious block by Mikhail Ellis. And Mondi, her first free throw of the night is good for her first point of the night. But not only does Mikhail Ellis have four inches of height on Mondi, Mikhail Ellis is just such a strong physical player that when she does not get a clean block like the one we saw two blocks ago. She's gonna foul you hard just because of how physical she can be, and we see it there. Now she gets a foul, a tra travel tagged on her. Claps her hands out of frustration. Just not getting her, her feet set. We've seen a couple of travels called here in the first quarter. The Cougars just have to be able, when they get that pass, get their feet set and then make their move. Struggled with that just a little bit in this first quarter and resulted in the travel call. Less than 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Shot clock about eight seconds ahead of the game clock. Cougars will get at least one more possession here. That shot put up no good. Ball knocked out last touch CUC. Nine seconds to go on the shot clock. 16 and a half on the game clock. As the Cougars were awarded possession right here, and I think the referee just getting it backwards. Michaela Ellis was going to try to go along with it. And now they get it sorted out. Now if the Cougars were trying to get a free possession right there, or what they were doing, but good thing the refs caught it. Ellis pulling some tricks out of her bag, but the refs catch her before she can do anything with it. This inbound pass goes off the foot of Allie McGregor. So Crusaders, they'll get another chance in an inbounding pass. This one right in the front of the Cougars bench. And now the referee has a talk between Mondi and... Sydney Mitchell. These players going at it a little bit when trying to find the inbound pass. Farrell has to get rid of it. Bounce pass picked off by Princess Gates. Cougars, they have 12 seconds to do something. Sydney Mitchell, she goes ahead for the layup. No good. Princess Gates clucks the rebound and gets it done. Nice job by Princess Gates just being right behind Mitchell, able to get the miss and put it back up. Mondi, last second field goal is no good. And that'll do it for the first 10 minutes of action. Cougars, they're going to take a 24-12 lead into the break. They'll talk things over with Coach Lauren Martin. Meanwhile, GLCC, their head coach, Ray Kimball, he's going to have some work to do here as his team struggling to get anything going in the first quarter. So we'll be back in just a second for second quarter action. You're watching the Cougar Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a second. Cougar Nation, we love the support you give us on and off the court. To donate to our Athletic Communications Department, hit the thank button. This helps us to continue to have the best live stream possible for some great Cougar basketball moments. Thank, thank you, you and enjoy, enjoy the game. game.
Second quarter about to kick off here. Cougars, a dominant first 10 minutes of the game. They take a 24 to 12 lead into the second quarter. And Parker, one of the things you'll notice that when you look at the scorebook is that no Cougars really dominating here. Layla Scott, she leads the pack with six points, but that was just off of two three-pointers. Other than that, three points, two points, two points, two points. I mean, no one has more than three besides Scott. This has just been a very all-around great offensive output from CUC. It's been really unselfish basketball, kind of spreading the wealth a little bit, allowing everyone to get involved in uh, – uh, Coach Martin's really gone into her bench, played a lot of players in that, in that first quarter. We're seeing even some more players like Abby Cooley get some minutes here in the second. Abby Cooley checks into the game, as Parker mentioned. Now Missouri Wingham into the paint for Alice. She finds Abby Kulig. Foul blown, however, on a violation on Alice. And now we get whistles blown. Is make, referees making sure the fouls on the big board are reset down to zero for everybody. Both teams were in the bonus by the end of the first quarter. Now they get a fresh, sl fresh slate here. As Nakano up top to Yonko off the front of the rim. No good. Christian College, they are still looking for their first three-pointer. 0 for 7 so far. Pass tipped, lands in the hand of Ellis. Baseline jumper by Scott. She pulls it back and then finds Perry. That's no good. Scott right there for the rebound, puts it up. No good, another rebound, Scott. Second chance opportunity for Leela Scott. Talk about perseverance there from number 15 in gold. Getting two rebounds just herself on that one offensive possession. Really nice sequence of events for Leela Scott. Mondi blows by Kool-Aid, can't hit the shot. Now a foul on the floor. As the referees converge and talk about it, and it'll be on Kulig. Kulig's first, team's first. And now an inbound pass coming from Leia Yanko. Yanko with two points on the night. She feeds it inside to Kent. Kent goes to work on Kulig, and now she kicks out to Mondi. Mondi puts it on the ground. She's rejected by Abby Kulig. Crusaders get the ball back. Nakano in the corner. Three seconds on the shot clock. She's got to put something out, kicks it out. Shot is off and no good. That would have counted from Fitzgerald. Just cannot sink the three ball. Now Leela Scott, she sank two three balls tonight. She finds Missouri Wingham over to Alexis Desjardins. Desjardins. Puts the spin cycle move on Fitzgerald before passing to Ellis back up top. Wingham. Wingham back to Ellis. Ellis, she's going to baseline drive and she'll draw a foul. Blocking foul called on Yanko. Leela getting some instruction from her head coach, Lauren Martin. Cougars offense has been playing very well here in this first half of basketball and really Michaela Ellis and players like Leela Scott who has eight points really getting it done on the offensive end for CUC. Michaela Ellis tagged with a holding foul. Looks a little confused by the call as that's her second of the night. She's gonna have to be careful, already two fouls here. Can't afford to get silly fouls. I mentioned one. Of, she's gonna be a player that really Needs to step up and kind of find her rhythm here in this game. Long two from Mondi, no good. Ball still loose, gathered by Desjardins. Now Michaela Ellis, she gets fouled by Mondi. Mondi getting a little too physical, physical there with the Cougars grad student who will now check out of the game in favor of Miracle Anderson. Number 44, the uh, freshman appearing in her first collegiate season. She's appeared in six games so far for the Cougars, all but one. And she's been gaining some more playing time as the season grows long. She gets the pass at the top of the paint. Now to a corner, 3-4, Desjardins, nothing but net for number 12. 
and Alexis Desjardins really didn't have that much space to work with, but as soon as she got the ball, just that quick release, and she was ready to fire. Yanko, she thought about firing a three and said she dribbles, passes over to Kent, now Mondi. Defended by wing, Mondi gets into the paint. Her shot is no good. Mondi just having a rough day. She's going to be 0 for 10 from the field. Still looking for her first field goal. Missouri Wingham thought she was doing something fancy. Instead, all she comes up with is a travel call. And because of that, Crusaders will get the ball here. 29-12 in favor of the team in gold. We see the Cougars already applying, or were applying the full court press. I believe they reverted back just to a regular defense now. They're going to have to be sharp here defensively. Nakano hands it to Mondi. Mondi on the perimeter against Layla Scott. Uses the screen from Yonko and can't do anything with it. Now that shot blocked by Wingham. Players falling all over the place and foul on the Crusaders. Mondi tagged with it. And she's going to have to check out of the game now. Mondi, that'll be her third personal foul. It's just been a tough night for, for Mondi. Three personal fouls already, two points. She's 0 for 11 from the field. Both of her points coming from the free throw line. She's a player that's been averaging double digits for this team at 15.8. She's just really struggled to get going. And Mondi came in, as Parker said, the third, one of the leading scorers on this team, third to be exact as Missouri Wingham, her three is no good and out. But when your team is struggling, they're down by 17 with 6.05 and you lose your third highest scorer, that's obviously gonna hurt, not to mention she's 0 for 11 from the field on top of that. So even if she wasn't in foul trouble, she's just not having a very good night in general. And if you're Coach Ray Kimball, definitely not excited about that. She's probably not going to play the rest of the half. And imagine her getting some very limited time in the second. Bianco puts it towards the rim, gets nothing because of it. Layla Scott finds the Zuri Wingham. Wingham hits Scott. Top of the key, three for Scott. No good. Rebound still on the ground. Nakano picks it up. Hands it to Yanko. Yanko, a pull up three. That's no good. Teams trading missed threes. As here comes Miracle Anderson. Another three ball. This from Desjardins. And she breaks the drought. Alexis Desjardins. You can always count on her for a three. She hits number two on the night. She's up to eight points here. 32 12. Cougars up by 20. As this ball poked away, Desjardins picks it up. Desjardins racing to the rim, puts it up and in. Alexis Desjardins. That's something you don't see often from Desjardins, getting the steal and then going coast to coast. But she's been phenomenal, especially just I want to go back to her last three-point shot. It's just that quick release that allows her to be so efficient. Inside pass to Yanko. And she finishes it, easiest layup in basketball. And now the Cougars, they're gonna call a timeout here despite holding a 20 point lead. And it will be a full timeout. So we'll take a break here on the Cougar Sports Network as well. CUC in total control of this game up 34-14 on the Crusaders. We'll be back in just a second. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, CUC on top of GLCC, 34 to 14, 441 left to go here. And interesting move there, Parker, by Coach Martin. Your team was up 22 points at the time, and then 
GLCC finds a break in the defense and brings it within 20, and you call the timeout. Kind of an interesting tactic there. You'll see coaches sometimes, they'll call timeouts when the other team gets a couple buckets in a row just to slow things down, but Coach Martin taking no chances. She calls it when they're back within 20. Not really sure why the, the timeout was called, but I'm sure she just wants to see her, her team. She, she really wants to see a clean game. And this game hasn't been entirely clean for the Cougars. They've had a couple lapses, so probably just wanting to clean that up. And now GLCC, they pull within 20. It is an 18-point lead, 34 to 16. As Wingham feeds McGregor inside, no good on the shot, but draws the foul. So a chance for two here for number 30. Foul on Nakano, she'll get her third foul, so she's on foul watch. And you know, Parker, an interesting point is that you can't have players foul out in this game if you are GLCC. You have two players on your bench. You have one of them foul out. Then you're down to just one sub. You have two foul out, which is a possibility with Nakano. She's at three, as is Mondi. I mean, at that point, you're going to be playing with five players on your bench team in general if you have two players fall out which you have two players on track to do so yeah and uh, just going back to that's where depth really is such a factor and it's been a hurting point for this team only seven players tonight so really have to be smart on the defensive end don't get unnecessary fouls Kent going inside to work on McGregor she gets tagged with the travel Nakano and Mondi, they're both on the bench with three fouls each. They're their, the leading scorer and third leading scorer on this great Lake Christian College team. So not only are you losing depth, you're losing two of your top three scorers, which you need when you're down by 20 here, 338 left to go. Corner three from Princess Gates, and no good. Rebound collected by Reed. Gates, it gets slapped out of her hand, but Allison McGregor's there to clean up the mess. Now McGregor inside the paint, and she'll draw another foul. It all started with the hustle play rebound from Kalia Reed, and then the nice dish by Missouri Wiggum to find Allie McGregor, who now gets a, another chance at the free throw line to get some more points for her team in the second quarter. And... I feel like that's something that, you know, Cougar fans, the coaching staff, that they've been wanting to see from Allie McGregor in her first two seasons at CUC. She's in her junior year, which is just the aggressiveness at the rim. This rim, this should be a player who's drawing a ton of fouls every game just because of, you know, how tall she is, the fact she's always down in the paint, and yet that really hasn't been a key part of her game. So, as I've said a couple times this year, you know, there's an art to drawing fouls, and Allison McGregor really does have the perfect archetype of player to do so. Yeah, and it doesn't help, too, that her minutes have kind of diminished as the season has progressed. We saw that she was coming off the bench, and you made the point that she's been a starter the majority of her career. Now she finds herself in a different role. But, you know, sometimes obviously everyone wants to be a starter, but sometimes that can be a beneficial thing for players as they find a new a new role on the bench. I know, you know, sometimes the bench is kind of associated with, you know, maybe not being as skilled, whatever it may be, but those bench players, they're just as valuable as your starters, that depth. So, yes, maybe a move from starter to bench player is not ideal in a player's mind, but that doesn't mean you can't still be a very productive player for your team. See, so you see their lead remains at 20. Here comes Yanko now, pass inside, knocked away by Princess Gates and out. So inbound pass coming for the Crusaders and checking in will be the freshman, Lindley Southern, making her fifth appearance on the year. Got a first career start in the game against Dominican on Saturday. And she's another player who's been earning the trust of her coach. She gets a tip on that pass. Ball still loose. Not anymore. Kalia Reed with the interception. Reed puts on the Jets. Goes right to the rim. No good. No foul as well. Ball still loose. Lindley Southern. She's leaving it out on out. All out on the court. 
She's a, a player that the team really r respects, and uh, she, she's a team favorite. We saw that as she was getting up off the bench to come check into the game, the entire bench started applauding. So the team loves her, and it's a really good sign for the freshman. That shot no good. Ball gathered up by Malia Perry. Princess Gate, she bounces it to McGregor down low. McGregor with the nice bounce off the board. Makes it 38 to 16. 203 left to go here in the first half as bringing it up the court now is Yanko. Ball poked away. Yanko right there to collect it. Lindley Southern all over her. Ball still loose. Kalia Reed with the poke. Kalia Reed to the rim and in. Great defense there from a pair of standout freshmen for the Cougars. And Kalia Reed just so quick, flashing uh, the fast hands, getting the steal, and pretty sure you're not going to get an easier layup in your life. Yanko to uh, the rim, draws the foul on Southern. And now Abby Kulik, she'll check in for McGregor. McGregor, she'll leave with seven points on the night. Seven free throws as well. She's converted on three of them. As now on the charity stripe, Yanko misses her first shot. Yanko, so far tonight, four points. She was the leading scorer for GLCC's last game when she had 23. She's at five now after that free throw make. Kalia Reed brings up the ball, tries to slow the offense down, directing players. She gets a screen from Abby Kulig. Long two, no good. Ball loose, it's going over towards the Cougars bench. Kalia Reed able to pick it up. 16 seconds to go on the shot clock. Kalia Reed. It's a screen from Southern, hits Southern on the pop. Now hits Kulig, Kulig back to Reed. Reed. Puts the moves on Farrell, a tough floater, it goes! Kalea Reed just cannot stop producing highlights in her first eight games as a Cougar. And she's she's a freshman and she's been big. We saw that she's a tough-nosed player driving into the paint. I believe there are four players around her too and she still got the floater. Not an ex, you know, explicitly tall player either, yet she just plays with so much fire as the Cougars Grab the ball, 33 seconds on the game clock, about eight seconds behind the shot clock. As she's really slowing this offense down. Cougars want just about the last shot here. Crusaders should get another possession, however. Farrell pressing out on Reed. Reed thought about using the screen, denies it from Southern. Now Reed passes over to Kulig and draws a foul before doing so. It'll be on at number 12 in black. That is Farrell. And now Farrell is in foul watch as well with three. So that means going into halftime, Coach Ray Kimball was going to have three players in foul watch with three fouls each. It's going to be tough. Those players are going to have to play smarter on the defensive end, have to be aware of foul situation, foul trouble, because depth is already an issue. You have seven players playing tonight, three of which are in foul trouble. You have to clean it up defensively. Yeah, and just because of the math, you're going to have to play one of them at any given time. You have three players who have three fouls. You have seven players total, so at least one of them will be on the court and is at risk of getting their fourth and maybe even fifth foul down the line. Now the Crusaders, they have seven and a half seconds to get down court. Inbound pass from Fitzgerald as the Cougars are playing some man-to-man -man defense here. Farrell grabs the ball, less than five to go. Inbound pass, it's kicked by a Cougar. And now Crusaders will inbound the ball a little closer to CUC's basket, 3.1 seconds to go. Fitzgerald inbounding Abby Kulig in front of her, waving her arms, creating chaos. Fitzgerald, she finds Greer. Greer, she an inbound pass, shot, shot pass, chass, whatever you want to call it, it goes nowhere. And because of that, Cougars, they're going to take a 44-17 point lead, a 44-17 lead, excuse me, into halftime. It has been all CUC so far as some of the 
leaders in this game in pointed is Alexis Desjardins. She's got 10 thanks to two three-pointers. In terms of rebounds, Mackenzie Kent of Great Lake Christian College, she has seven. Your assist leader tonight, a three-way tie between Missouri Wingham, Michaela Ellis, and Leela Scott. They all have two. And that's what's going to take us in a halftime. So we'll take a break here on the Cougar Sports Network. And when we come back, the Cougars dominating over GLCC right now. We'll have more action for you in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Cougar Sports Network. Concordia University Chicago is a Christ-centered Lutheran University where truth, freedom, and vocation form students for lives of influence and service for the common good. Our university offers a wide variety of undergraduate and graduate degree options that are available in person and online. That means we have a program designed for you. Whether you're a high school student, an adult returning to complete your degree, or someone looking to enhance your credentials and prepare for career growth. As a member of this university community, you'll also find support in your spiritual and personal life so you can grow in the faith and discover ways to serve others. To start your next journey with us, visit cuchicago.edu today. I'm a CUC nursing student and choose to stand tall for healing at a university that places Christ at the center and embraces teaching students to live a life fulfilled by purpose and meaning. Concordia University Chicago's new Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree is an innovative and rigorous four-year program that will prepare you to rise to the daily challenges of a rewarding nursing career and serve a greater cause. Our newly built modern simulation center features four distinct spaces, a skills attainment lab, multi-specialty intensive care spaces, a health assessment learning center, and a simulated home environment. Due to our close proximity to many world-class teaching hospitals, CUC's clinical rotations offer an abundance of diverse and real-world experiences. Learn more about earning your BSN at a Christ-centered university today. Hi, I'm Monica here at Concordia University Chicago and we're here outside of Concordia Hall. Concordia Hall is the university's newest residence hall, right on the edge of campus, perfect for students who want to explore the nearby downtown of Oak Park and River Forest. The flexible suite style living in fully furnished bedrooms lets students choose what works best for them. Every floor is complete with a community lounge and full common kitchen with a kitchenette, microwave, sink, and refrigerator. The first floor offers the Victory Lounge, connecting to two additional residence halls with no shortage of ways to relax. 
You're also right next to an open outdoor plaza, better known as Victory Lane. So now we're here in Concordia Hall's suite style dorm room. And this is a really nice place to just hang out and chill. And since it's so big, there's plenty of room to spread out and do your homework and just relax. So now making our way into one of the bedrooms, there's plenty of space in this room for you and your roommate. A lot of times students will move the desk so that they've got their separate study space, but my roommate and I, we get along really well, so we can just work together here in the same space. Sometimes I like doing art as well, as you can see by the painting here. It's a 16 by 10 feet space, and most rooms on campus are 10 by 12 feet. So it's really nice to have a little extra space to work with here in Concordia Hall. So this hall is super close to the chapel and the Kennedy Community Center, which has the new Crossroads Dining Hall. So the location is super convenient. And I really love the city scene too. The location here is the closest on campus to the Oak Park River Forest downtown area, which has a ton of great stores and restaurants. Speaking of the city scene, I adore the view from this lounge because you can see the Chicago skyline right there. Concordia Hall at Concordia University, Chicago.
What's going on, Cougar fans? Welcome back to the Cougar Sports and Network as we are seeing some Cougar domination here in Geisman Gymnasium. They're on top of the great Lake Christian College, 44 to 17. And Parker, everything has been coming up maroon and gold so far this game through the first 20 minutes. And one of the most surprising things about that, though, is the Cougars, they only have one player in double digits, and that is Alexis Desjardins. She leads the game with 10 points. But besides that, this has been a really great display of the Cougars just sharing the love, everybody getting their shots, everybody getting their turn. Yeah, we talked about it in the, the broadcast. What this is is it's very unselfish basketball. Alexis Desjardins, the only player in double figures with 10. Everybody's getting a chance to touch the ball. Coach Martin's really been going into her bench, really utilizing her depth in the first half, something she'll continue to do in the second. It's been very unselfish basketball. Definitely. As for Great Lake Christian College, it's kind of been the opposite. Just no shots are falling for them. Six for 37 from the field. They're also 0 for 8 from three at point land. It's just been a very sloppy game from GLCC. Absolutely. They just really have not been able to find any rhythm. And we already talked about the short bench. Only seven players playing tonight. That's going to be an issue for them. Not to mention they have three players in foul trouble with right. three. Right. So they're going to have to be really careful. Right. Mondi as well as Farrell and Nakano all have three fouls each. So they're going to have to be really careful. Or we might see some power play basketball from the Cougars, some five on four if things really take a bad turn for those three players in foul watch. But Parker, I mean, the recipe to success for CEC seems pretty straightforward at this point when you have a near 30-point lead at half. But what specifically do the Cougars need to do in this second half to maintain this lead, come away with a second straight win? And oftentimes when you have a lead such as this, it can be very tempting to get lax day school in the second half. But you got to remember, Cougars have a tough stretch coming up. They have Wisconsin lacrosse on Saturday, a very good team. They're also about to hit stride with conference play. Right. So you got to continue to do the things that you've done in that first half well. Mm -hmm. It should bode well for the Cougars. Right. It's going to be an interesting balance for the Cougars on one hand. You want to get some of those bench players and kind of see how they work around this offense, this defense. But on the other hand, like you you know, like you know, always want to do, you want to pull away with a win, head into conference play on Wednesday against Alverno with a second straight win. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of balance Coach Lauren Martin finds with her team. They're up 44-17 to over the Great Lake Christian College Crusaders. We're going to have second half action for you on the Cougar Sports Network. So don't go anywhere just yet. We'll be back in just a second. Halftime buzzer has rang out, and the teams head back out to the court as we get ready for second half action between the Cougars and the Crusaders. Concordia on top of Great Lake Christian College, 44 to 17, as we get ready for the third quarter here. Crusaders start with the ball. Mondi, she's one of those players me and Parker mentioned in foul watch. She has three. She handles it against Leela Scott. Over to Yanko. Yanko, top of the key for Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald gets knocked on the ground. Leela Scott with a bit of a reach in. She'll get tagged with the foul. That'll be foul number one on the night for uh, Leela Scott. Leela Scott getting uh, uh, some solid play time in that first half. Playing 12 minutes, has eight points. She's done some solid work tonight, and as the season has progressed, she's looked better and better each week, and she's really all business. So great player for the Cougars, someone to be on the lookout for as the season continues. Nakano, an inside pass to uh, Mackenzie Kent, and that was just a bad miss. She hit the 
shot clock on top of the scoreboard before hitting the rim. And because of that, turnover, the Cougars grab the ball now. Pass top of the key for Desjardins, feeds it inside, turn on jumper, Michaela Ellis off the glass, just so clean with it. Smooth like butter, great play by Alexis Desjardins. What GLCC has seen from her tonight is she's a lethal three-point shooter, got her on the pump fake, got the pass inside to Michaela Ellis, turn around jumper, got the kiss off the glass, great play for the Cougars. Top of the key, Yanko, she'll try a three, no good, in and out. As GLCC 0 for 9 now from beyond the arc. Desjardins, a hard drive to the rim. She gets stuffed and goes out of bounds. So turnover on Desjardins. Great Lake will inbound up thanks to Yanko. She hits Nakano. Nakano over to Yanko. Back to Nakano. Over her head and out. A missed pass there from Yanko. Too much for the 5 2 Nakano to go up and grab. Shea Greer, she checks into the game for Kent. Reed, she finds Scott. Scott now, little inside pass to Ellis, back out to Scott. Scott looking for her options, inside pass to Ellis again. Ellis knocks over a defender, no good on the basket, gets her own rebound, puts it in. I mean, it's just a, mis a mismatch. Michaela Ellis is probably the most physical player out on the court right now getting guarded by someone significantly smaller than her, all you gotta do is get her the, get her the ball in the paint and let her go to work. Mondi's drive stopped by an Alexis Desjardins poke and now here comes Kalia Reed with some speed. Reed all the way to the rim, it's good, Kalia Reed. Kalia Reed's vision is what really excites me. She's so quick and once she sees an open lane to the basket, takes it without hesitation and gets to the rim. Kalia Reed commits the foul on Mondi. That'll be Reed's third foul, so now she's in a little bit of trouble here. As inbounding it will be Yanko. Yanko finds Nakano. This pass ahead to Yanko. Yanko pulls up for the J, no good. Rebound by Desjardins. She turns the corner, she's moving the other way. Desjardins leading the attack for CUC. Stops, turns, hits. Princess Gates, a baseline jumper, no good. There's Michaela Ellis coming in for the board. Desjardins, a long three, no good off the back of the iron. Too strong. Despite missing the shot from Desjardins, another rebound by Michaela Ellis, that physical presence, and then we see once again Desjardins just not afraid to pull that trigger. Cougars two on one, Reed to the rim, it's good. Michaela, Kalia Reed, excuse me. Little stop on a dime. She got Monty to shoot by her. That led to a wide open basket. Nakano, that's no good. GLCC still has no points here in the second half. GLCC have not scored a bucket since the second quarter. Meanwhile, the Cougars starting to heat up. Kalia Reed and Michaela Ellis both with four points here in quarter number three, the only Cougars to score so far. Now add Missouri Wingham. Missouri Wingham, she says this is a grown woman's game, backs down Nakano, and she ups the lead 54 to 17. Cougars just three points away from taking a 40 point lead over GLCC. And as you can see, Missouri Wingham flexing her muscles a little bit to the CUC bench. Proven too big for Nakano to handle in the paint. Something also to point out, the Cougars are aware of the foul situation that C GLCC is in, so they're trying to draw some fouls to get these players in foul and more foul trouble. Good defense there by Desjardins on Greer. Now here comes Michaela Ellis, hits Princess Gates in the corner. No good in and out. Almost looked like money from number 10 in gold. The rim had other plans. Mondi now, she goes to the rim, it's good. Mondi breaks the drought, hits her first field goal of the night. She's now one for 12. Only her fourth point, we mentioned she was cold in that first half going 0 for 11. Her only points coming from the free throw line. Really nice play by her to break her scoring drought. Ball bounces around, here's a jumper from Sydney Mitchell, it's no good. Rebound batted around, grabbed by Ellis. Desjardins wide open, three, it's good. You cannot give number 12 that much space. And the Cougars up now by 38. 
Desjardins even took her time. She she had so much space to work with, took a dribble, kind of waited for a second, and then put up the three. And what, what else do you know? She's going to make that eight times out of ten. Three for six from beyond the arc is Alexis Desjardins. Probably the best three-point shooter on this Cougars team as now Michaela Ellis gets tangled up. Jump ball possession will favor the home team as Leela Scott checks in for Nazari Wingham. Now another chance for the Cougars to extend their lead to 40, maybe even 41, depending on the type of shot they get. But it's just been a dominant third quarter. Oh, Michaela Ellis rips that pass out of the air. She tells Randy Fitzgerald to take a seat, and she finishes the basket. But I believe... Just got teed up. A foul, so she'll get teed up. As we'll have to see if that basket will count. It should be 59-19 to 19 in favor of the Cougars. The big board is still reading 57-19. Our stats book says 59-19. And so because of the T, Nakano, she'll shoot a pair of free throws. She hits one. GLCC officially hits the 20 point mark. The big board still reads 57. As we'll have to see. The basket should count, Say but it. the penalty, because the the, the foul was after the basket, but very uh, almost uncharacteristic foul by Michaela Ellis, given the stare down. I mean, you got to show some sportsmanship. You're up by so much already as it is. There's really no point in that foul. Yanko, she takes a three. It's no good. Tied up was Greer and Perry. Perry comes away with it. Now the big board reads 59. Mc and McGregor receives a really great go-ahead pass. She finishes the play, now a foul tagged on Princess Gates. And so two shots coming up here for Mondi. She has a chance to build on her four-point night. Coming into tonight, she was averaging just under 16 points a game. She's having trouble here as her first free throw is good. 61-22. And despite it's been, a, it's been a cold night for Mondi, she's been able to find ways to get to the free throw line. Pretty good free throw shooter as well as we've seen. Three for three, chance to go four for four. This is that shot, but she's been able to find ways to score from the free throw line, even if it's not her traditional way of scoring. Bodies hit the floor and now a turnover on CUC's part as the Crusaders will have a chance to make the score a little bit more respectable. Down by 39. They are within 40. And so then we're looking on the wrong side of that number for a minute. As Nakano, she's swarmed by Sydney Mitchell. Still, she finds an open player in Mondi finally. Now Mondi getting guarded closely by Malia Perry. Perry runs into a screen. McGregor switches on to Mondi. Mondi, first shot, no good. Rebound and puts it in. Mondi starting to find her groove a little bit after she went over in the first half. This is the McKenzie Mondi that GLCC is used to seeing. Really cold in that first half, but finding ways, different ways to score here in the third quarter. Sydney Mitchell tried to put the moves on Farrell. She loses it, grabs the ball off the ground. Leela Scott, Cougars have less than 10 to go. Leela Scott, turn around, baseline jumper. It's no good. Now here's Princess Gates. She cleans up the mess, brings out the Febreze, cleans the board. And now here comes the Crusaders. That ball bobbled around. Foul tagged on Mitchell. Cougars get a sub in Kulig. Really going back to that play from Princess Gates, I mean, almost knocked over her own teammate, Sydney Mitchell, fighting for that rebound. Really aggressive when it comes to fighting for rebounds on the offensive end. She's able to get it, put it back up for two to extend this lead. Nakano hits a free throw, makes it 63 25. Her second free throw is up and no good. Board collected by two players. And it'll be possession for 
As we are still waiting for a definitive answer here. Every player pointing in a different direction. Possession for CUC, the final call. Here's Sidney Mitchell. Mitchell running point for the Cougars on this possession. Gets it to Kulig. Kulig, top of the key. Malia Perry, 4-3. It is good. Nothing but net for number one. And the Cougars back up by 39 just for a second. As whistle blows, that'll be a timeout for CUC. 30 seconds by Lauren Martin and the Cougars. So with 3.13 to go, we'll take a break here on the Cougar Sports Network. CUC continuing their first half domination into the third quarter. 66-27. We'll be back in just a second. Sixty-six twenty-seven. our score here in the third quarter. 3.13 to go. Cougars on top of Great Lake Christian College. As referees finalizing them some things with the scorer's table. Malia Perry, she finds Sydney Mitchell. Mitchell now. Abby Kulig, top of the key, over to Princess Gates. Gates back to Kulig. And now three second violation called on Ally McGregor. And because of it, Crusaders will move the other way. Yeah, an e a, a easy foul to call. The Crusaders not playing great defense in the paint. Ally McGregor just stood in there a second too long. Easy call for the official. Tough jumper and it sank. My number 31, Shea Greer. Maybe one of the first tough shots we've seen GLCC hit tonight. They've had trouble hitting those contested shots. And now McGregor down at low. McGregor turnaround shot, that's a bad miss. And now GLCC, they move the other way. Yanko over to Mondi. Mondi puts the ball on the ground, goes to work against another number one in Malia Perry. It's no good. Nice move by Monty, just not able to connect. Sydney Mitchell hands it off Malia Perry. Perry dribbles it in, kicks it out to Gates, back to Perry, a long two, and she'll hit it. Two ball from Malia Perry. She's finding her sharpshooter ways here in the third quarter. Malia Perry, another player like Alexis Desjardins, not afraid to pull it, have that quick trigger. Malia Perry, when she is on, She's on, and the other team is going to know it. Nice shot by Malia Perry. Another missed three from GLCC. And now the Cougars, they sub in. Number 25, Janie Turnes. Turnes, a senior member of the Cougars squad. She hits out to the arc, clears the path, and that pass misplaced by Sydney Mitchell bounces in the lap of... Kayla Jackson on the Cougars bench. And now the CUC bench plays hot potato with it before making its way to the ref. Nakano. Guarded by Sydney Mitchell up top. Nakano swings it out to Yanko. Back to Nakano. Now inside, here's Greer on Janie Turnes. Greer, nice turnaround move there. Gets it off the glass. And, and Peter, we, we've seen they, this team had 17 points at halftime. And now they have 14 points just in this quarter alone. They're starting to find their rhythm. Princess Gates, she knocks down Nakano, but will get tagged with a charge. Gates a little too aggressive as Nakano able to set her feet. Sub coming in, Gates out, Miracle Anderson in. As Gates, she's at three fouls, so she's got to be careful here. Also at three fouls, the player dribbling the ball right now. That is Nakano. 
Nakano uses the screen from Greer. She's gonna keep taking it and kicks it out. Mondi, she'll decide to move the ball back to number 13, Yanko. Her three's a miss. Ball on the ground, still on the ground. Finally scooped up by Mondi. Mondi now dribbles her way through the CUC defense and gets tagged on the way up. So she'll be able to shoot two here. Miracle Anderson charged with the foul. We have 35 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And the, despite being up by so much, the Cougars up, up by 37. You notice there are just some plays that they're settling. Like that was a foul that very uncharacteristic that it was probably a silly foul. And you're allowing a team you held to 17 points in that first half. You now allowed them to score 16 points here in the third quarter. 68-33 is our score with less than 33 seconds to go. Sydney Mitchell to Malia Perry. Perry trying to find someone in motion and a foul charged here. That'll go on Nakano and that's number four. So she's one away from exiting the game and she's gonna exit the floor for now. She gets checked in for by Randy Fitzgerald. Nakano with four fouls. Again, you get five, you have to leave the game permanently. Nakano yeah. has been one of the better players for this team, for this Cru Crusader team, already with four fouls. It's a tough situation for this team. Shot clock is at low. Sydney Mitchell dribbles, no good on the shot. Anderson the rebound, five seconds to go. Abby Kulik finishes the play. And that'll do it for the third quarter. The Cougars. And I mean, the funny thing is though, this was by far the best quarter we've seen from the Crusaders. They scored, as you mentioned, they scored 17 points in the first half combined. And now here they score 16 in this third quarter. Yet the defense still struggling for GLCC. They let the Cougars hit 70 points, which is like Cougars are gonna take a 70-33 lead into the final 10 minutes of regulation. GLCC gonna need to mount a pretty hefty comeback if we want any chance of overtime or late game dramatics. See what they can do when we come back in just a second. You're watching the Cougar Sports Network. Back here in Geisman Gymnasium, Cougars on top of the Crusaders 70-33 as we enter the final frame of regulation. And Parker, I mean, if we look at that third quarter for GLCC, by far their best quarter as a team offensively. Shot just about 30% from the field. And before that, their highest mark in a quarter was 19% back in the first quarter. But despite of how well this offense kind of found its groove after real, really struggling in the first half, their defense still struggled mightily in that third quarter. They allowed the Cougars to put up 12 field goals, 12 good field goals, and that's why Cougars, they are looking at a 37-point lead right now. Yeah, they almost scored their half, their first half total in one quarter of basketball, and yet the Cougars still outscored them by 10. Can be very disheartening for this Crusader team for sure. Fitzgerald collects Greer's miss. Ball still in possession of the Crusaders. Now Mondi up top. She'll try a hand at a three. It is no good. Just bad luck there for Mondi. In and out. Hit both sides of the rim. And now the Cougars, they move the ball the other way. Sidney Mitchell surveys the scene. Puts the moves on Farrell. Gets a screen from Janie Turner. Nice move there, Sidney Mitchell. That, that, that was an impressive move. Just slicing her way through the defense like it was nothing. And then getting to the basket, putting up an underhand layup. And wow, just nice move from Sydney Mitchell. Pulls out a little razzmatazz. 
And now a miss from the Crusaders gives the ball back to the Cougars. Long pass there, and it's picked off. Sidney Mitchell threw that one right into the hands of Yanko. Farrell back to Yanko, but it's picked off by Kulig. Now the Cougars with their own cause turnover. Malia Perry hits Miracle Anderson. Anderson slows it down. Sidney Mitchell feeds it to Kulig. Kulig, a jumper on the edge of the paint. No good. Janie Turnes grabs a rebound. Turn is up. No good. Janie Turner is looking for her first points of the night. And now Sydney Mitchell, four, three, yes, Sydney Mitchell. Raining it down from three point land, and the Cougars are up by 42 now. Sydney Mitchell now with seven points on the night, five in the past 30 seconds, it seems like. It's been absolutely a, a great sequence of, a play, of plays from her. Farrell pump fake, kicks it to the top of the key. Yanko, it's good. And a couple of fortunate bounces. That gives the Crusaders their first three-pointer of the night. Now one for 15 from three-point land. Meanwhile, the Cougars there, eight for 19 as Miracle Anderson. Some hard dribbles. Janie Turnage, she'll get her first basket of the night. This is the type of unselfish basketball that I've been referring to Miracle Anderson had a chance to get the layup herself. Instead, made the nice pass to Janie Turner has allowed her to get some points. But Sydney, or excuse me, Miracle Anderson has made some phenomenal passes since entering the game. Kulig commits the foul on the Crusader. It was Yanko, Yanko, excuse me, going up for the points. But just talked up. You know, Parker's point about the unselfishness, the Cougars, they're at 19 assists on the night on the court. Miracle Anderson is the leader, again, of players exclusively on the court with four. One more. Cindy Mitchell, she has three as well. And the next free throw from Yanko is good. Crusaders back with them, 39. And Cougars check in another freshman in Emma Nickerson. While the Crusader, Crusaders bring in Kent. That ball passed and tipped. Now lead pass to Fitzgerald. No good. They didn't even hit the rim on the layup attempt. Sydney Mitchell, she finds Nickerson. Nickerson bobbles it. Three from Anderson. No good. Anderson, who leads all Cougars in assists. Tried her hand at getting herself some points, no good. Now a floater in and out, Malia Perry. Perry, she had Nickerson leading the charge, instead she slows it down. Perry gets the ball back from Mitchell. Perry, nice move to the rim! The Cougars bringing out the fancy plays here in the second half. I mean, you have wide open lanes to the rim, take it, and Malia Perry showing off her athleticism, sidestepping another defender getting her way through the defense and getting to the basket. Farrell shovels it back to Mondi. Mondi now guarded by Mitchell. Mitchell goes for the steal. It's clean, but Mondi blows by her. She'll draw a foul on her way up. And Mondi Parker's done a really good job, really all Crusaders have, of slowing down the fouls in this second half. We saw in the first half, again, three players had three fouls. And so far in the second half, that trend has really, really slowed down. To be exact, they've committed just one personal foul in the second half, and that was Nakano's. Mondi will get one more free throw here. She misses her first. Mondi has, has made a living at the free throw line tonight. Now six of nine, six of her free throws. Ha that's half of her points to score tonight at 12. She's really found ways to score here in the second half. We mentioned that cold start in the first. Got to give credit to her for contributing to the offense significantly here in the final half of play. Kayla Jackson goes for a tough shot. She'll get a foul, however. Charge to Shea Greer. Taylor Jackson just entering the game for the Cougars. She's making 
appearance number five on the year. Meanwhile, Alina Paul also checks in for CUC. She's making her fourth appearance of the season. First free throw from Jackson is no good off the back of the iron. We see Coach Martin just starting to get into her reserves a little bit. Everybody getting some minutes here tonight. You're up by so much. Got to get some of these players who may not have as much experience a little bit of play time so that if need be, you can really rely on your bench depth as the season progresses. Yanko, she'll pull up from three. It's good. Another made three-pointer for the Crusaders. Both of their threes have come in this fourth quarter. Miracle Anderson, some hard dribbling. Nickerson at the top of the pan. She'll get hit with a travel violation. You see Nickerson got the ball at the free throw line, kind of panicked, didn't know what to do. Resulted in the travel call. It looks like she's trying to get that pass to Alina Paul. Lena Paul works on Mondi. Mondi, she runs into Kayla Jackson. Ball still in bounds somehow. Good effort there from Mondi. Now Farrell puts up a shot. Good couple bounces. And Farrell, she'll get her first points of the night. Miracle Anderson now. Emma Nickerson to the rim. It's good. Number 11. The freshman for CUC. And the Cougars have really been advantageous in this stage of the game. I mean, the Crusaders not playing good paint defense at all. So many open lanes, and the Cougars have been exploiting those here in the second half. Ball loose, picked up by Yanko. Long shot, no good. Miracle Anderson, she's been getting a ton of playing time in this second half. Three-pointer from Nickerson, no good. Bob poked by Alina Paul for a second. Now here comes the Crusaders. Great defense by Miracle Anderson, but a little too aggressive. She gets tagged with the foul on Yanko. Cougars. Cougars just trying to close out this ball game, trying to get... All players, some minutes, we see players like Emma Nickerson and Kayla Jackson, Alina Paul, players that typically do not get a whole lot of minutes, just trying to get them some experience here late in the game. Yeah, if my quick math is right, I only see one player on the Cougars bench who is dressed, who has not seen minutes yet tonight, and we'll see if Coach Martin will clear her bench in the last 420. Miracle Anderson, meanwhile, really slows it down. Cougars almost have a 40-point lead as Alina Paul loses her dribble, picks it up. She finds Lindley Southern. A lot of freshmen on the court right now for the Cougars, and Anderson, Paul, Nickerson, and Southern. The only one who isn't a freshman is Kayla Jackson. As Farrell pump fakes from three, puts it on the ground. Ball loose. Here comes Alina Paul with the steal, and she gets fouled. Then it'll go on Greer, her second on the night. Going back to that last possession, we saw Southern trying to get it in the post to Nickerson. Just a miscommunication. She thought Nickerson was going to stay on that low block, decided to come up to the free throw line, resulted in the turnover. So the Cougars will inbound it on their baseline. Miracle Anderson, she's really been the point guard of this second half for the Cougars. She finds an open Lindley Southern. She takes a jumper and hits a short jumper. Lindley Southern. She'll hit her first field goal of the night. Everyone's getting a little bit of love for CUC. Whistles blow, two free throws coming up for GLCC. It'll be a foul on at Miracle Anderson. Anderson will... Have to be a little careful now. She's got three fouls on the night. And got to give credit to the Crusaders. We mentioned the foul trouble that they were in in that first half. Only two fouls for them as a team. 
here in the second have been much smarter on the defensive end, and their offense has found a little bit of rhythm as well. This is a much different Crusader team here in the second half. Mondi, ball swatted down by Lily Southern, but Southern loses it quickly. Mondi, kick ball on CUC. As there it is, the final player from CUC's bench, Amaya Martin checks in. So Coach Martin has now played her entire bench. Every dressed player in goal and has seen the court tonight, which is just something you love to see everybody getting a little bit of action. Here's Yanko now, guarded by Paul. Yanko puts the moves on. Picks up her dribble, no good. And Amaya Martin, she hits Paul. Alina Paul now. Speed jumper, no good. Maya Martin, the rebound, that's no good. Rebound again, but it's lost, and here comes Nakano. She's got four personal fouls. She's got to be trouble. She's got to be careful in these final three minutes of play. And here's Paul. Alina Paul. Lena Paul puts the moves on Yanko and draws the foul. Yanko getting charged with her second personal foul of the day. Yeah, and just another foul from GLCC. Only their third of the half. Again, I mentioned much better in that aspect here in the second half. Well, the Cougars. As Alina Paul takes a three, it is no good. Takes two bounces, Southern the rebound. Finds Jackson, Jackson puts up to two and it's good. Kayla Jackson, Kayla Jackson a decent length jumper. And she's now up to three points on the night. Cougars 31 second chance points compared to the Crusaders who only have 10. Done very well in that aspect, really capitalizing on those offensive rebounds. Offensive foul, drawing the charge was Amaya Martin. And Mondi gets personal foul number four. As now she, just like her teammate Nakano, one away from being disqualified though with 2.12 left to go. Not going to do too much damage to GLCC if that does happen. Lena Paul now, top of the key. We're at the two-minute mark. Kayla Jackson inside. She has a nice finish. Really Good. nice pass from Alina Paul to get it over the top to a cutting Jackson who's just able to get to the rim. Farrell collects it. Bounce pass to Greer and a foul on the floor. This will go against CUC. So shots coming up for Farrell since... The Crusaders are in the bonus. 88-46 our score. First shot from Farrell, no good, too strong. She'll get another chance here. Redeem her first miss, Farrell. Shot is up and no good as well. 0-2 trip to the line for Farrell. Southern now, Cougars have numbers. Alina Paul. A long two, no good off the front of the iron. Rebound collected by Martin, but a foul on Nickerson. She pushed over a Crusader on a scramble for the miss. And so Nickerson, she's at three fouls, has to be a little careful with 137 left to go. Nickerson just... Uh, I mentioned it hasn't appeared in too many games so far this season. Getting like getting her first real game experience here, getting a significant amount of minutes here in the fourth quarter. Just a couple of careless fouls by her. Something that she'll be able to clean up the more experience she gets. You gotta remember she's only in her freshman season. Alina Paul now goes to work on Farrell to the rim. No good. Amaya Martin, it's good. Amaya Martin gets her first points of the night. Almost at the point where everybody on this team has scored tonight, only a couple of exceptions, but Cougars now at 90 points, done an excellent job of unselfish basketball. Really, that's one of the main takeaways from the game tonight. Cougars only have two players who have 
Zero points on the night. As Lillian Southern finds Kayla Jackson, pass off her hand, she collects it. Goes to work on Nakano, gets charged with a travel. A little skip through the air and with 54 seconds, the Crusaders will have one more guaranteed possession to try and make this loss look a little bit more respectable. Down by 42 here, Nakano. She finds Greer, Greer inside to Mondi. Mondi up, no good. Kayla Jackson, Cougars. And that's a turnover, another lost pass. Here's Farrell, she finds Nakano, a short jumper, it's no good. And that'll do it for the shot clock being necessary. As the Cougars are beating it by, I think just a couple milliseconds, shot up and a foul by the Crusaders. And Mile Martin will take a trip to the line. Foul on uh, Yanko. Now a trip to the free throw line for Amaya Martin to potentially get a, no, a couple more points for her. The shot clock, meanwhile, put at 20. So the Crusaders, and now the shot clock's just turned off. There's a .2 difference, which is negligible. So Crusaders will have at least one last possession here, Nakano. Dribbles to the rim and lays it in. One last bucket for GLCC, possibly, as Jackson is content to just hold it. She hits Amaya Martin, who wasn't even ready for the pass, and that'll do it. So the Cougars, they welcome the great Lake Christian College Crusaders to Geisman and put on a show for the home crowd. Take down GLCC, 92 to 50. Let's look over some of the stat leaders from the night. And in points, Alexis Desjardins leading the Cougars with 13, while y Yanko, she leads all players with her 15-point performance. In terms of a rebound, we have a three-way tie. Michaela Ellis with Mackenzie Kent and Mondi. They all have seven your assist leader for the night, Miracle Anderson. How about the freshman? Six assists for her. And that'll do it for our time here in Geisman. And Parker, when you're going back in a conference play on Wednesday, this is exactly the kind of win you want. You get your second win in a row, and you do so in dominating fashion over GLCC. Cougars have to be feeling pretty good about themselves heading into Alverno on Wednesday. Yeah, they, we mentioned in the pregame, went on a three-game losing streak, but now followed up with two straight victories. But you got a quick turnaround. You're hosting Alverno College, another conference opponent, on Wednesday night. So got to have short-term memory. Enjoy the loss tonight, but it's back to work tomorrow. And it's still a long season to go for the Cougars. I want to say thanks to everybody making this Cougar Sports Network production possible. Our spotters for the night, Dave Dimling and Chandler Kerr, Wyatt McLaughlin working the scoreboard as always. Our camera workers, Sebastian Miller, Emma Borelli, and Rafael Gonzalez. Our producers for the night, Ashley Schroll and Jessica Gang. Our photos taken by Juan Woodley. And of course, as always, under the direction of Sydney Plaskis Laher and our sports information director, Kale McLeod. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a minute for a post game interview with Coach Lauren Martin. So I want to say thanks, of course, to Parker Kelly for joining me on tonight's broadcast. But again, post game interview coming up with Coach Martin of the Cougars. We'll be back in just a second. Don't go anywhere.
What's going on, Cougar fans? Peter Borkowski back here on the Cougar Sports Network, joined by head coach Lauren Martin of the Cougars. And coach, your team with a big win over Great Lake Christian College. And, I mean, that would feel pretty good for you and your team. You won the game by uh, just about 40 points. And, you know, you had a tough win against Al um, Dominican, excuse me, on Saturday. I mean, these are two back-to-back -back big wins for your team. So I'm sure that locker room's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the key word there that you said was team, right? Mm -hmm. Big team wins that we've had. So um, we've done a lot of reflecting since we last played at home and uh, just how we have to defend the home court and come out. And I thought, thought we responded. It was, right. it was a and, nice team win. And you mentioned the team aspect of it. I mean, your leading score tonight, Alexis Desjardins, of course she had a great game, only scored 13 points, however, which is kind of low for a leading score. You had 23 assists on the night. You played, just, you played your entire bench, too. So as a head coach, I'm sure this is a really good opportunity for you to see you know what these players who are on the bench have got for later in the season I'm sure you just enjoy seeing all those players kind of get the love to be able to score some points yeah absolutely I think our bench scored 48 points and you know, it's some of the little things that you see uh, when you're when you're sprinting as hard as you can back on transition D and these kids all want to play and they make everyone better every day by working as hard as they can and right that's you know that's the collective group and uh, it takes us all to get the W definitely and and now you're back in conference play this upcoming Wednesday. Alverno coming right here to Geisman Gymnasium. So, I mean, what's kind of the game plan heading into that one? You've got two straight wins now, first conference win on Saturday. What are you looking to do in these next couple days of practice so you're ready to go against Alverno and carry the momentum over for your third straight win, hopefully? Yeah, exactly that. Carry the momentum over. Um, I think that our approach uh, for these these games we've been disciplined we've been extremely focused and uh, they know what the conference means you know, these are the first two games we get um, early before we get into the new year so Alverna's the last one before it's 2024 so we kind of want to send that that message to us you know right it's it's us together against whoever we play and uh, and we're excited to get back on the floor on Wednesday a little light day tomorrow for prep and just enjoy this moment with right. each other for sure well once again Cougars they take down the Great Lake Christian at college they're going to be heading into Wednesday with a two game win streak that Wednesday game right here in a Geisman Gymnasium taking on Alverno at 7 p.m. Coverage can of course be found on our website cougars.com and the live stream on our YouTube page CUC Sports but until then this is Peter Borkowski signing off of the Cougar Sports Network and wanting to say as always go Cougars Thank you so much for tuning in to today's Concordia University Chicago Cougars Athletics broadcast. We hope to see you on campus very soon. If you would like to learn more about what Concordia Chicago has to offer, go to cuchicago.edu.